everyone, welcome back. My name is Tris and this is the Double O'Neill channel. This is where I talk to you about model railways in the way that I like to do it. And how do I like to do it? Well, I like to enjoy the models coming from the viewpoint of the nostalgia. The fun of just making some bits up on the layout, do some kind of Let's call it fictional layout bits when you see my mountain that leads up to the 009 um, narrow gauge layout. For me, that's really fun and interesting, and it doesn't actually represent anything of what's out there, you know, how it's getting there. But for me, it's enjoyable, it allows me to be creative, as I'm sure a lot of you like to be creative when you do it. Um, I fully respect and appreciate all the amazing work that others do trying to replicate the real thing like my father's layout on the last episode which has gone really really well on the uh, the views and the comments it's been really wonderful to see um, the enjoyment that everyone else has been having from that so what have I done on this episode um, I will tell you I've done a few things and I've kind of squeezed them all into this episode because I felt there's no point stretching it out um, over other episodes. One thing that I'm really pleased about doing, and it's not super exciting for you, but on the last episode, if you haven't already checked it out, I was at my dad's layout and he uses the fine scale track. And it's got a bit of a gap between the sleepers. What that means is that it's more representative of the real life um, layouts. We T um, tend to use this um, HO track. Um, well, I say HO track, it's HO and double O, but it suits more of the American um, spacing, and we both share it. And so when you compare them side by side, let's look at that, you can see the difference there. And if you go to um, the, the real kind of numbers, when you scale it up from what we've got, this is very, very similar to what we run. Anyway, I don't need to teach half of you that, um, but if you're new to this, I wouldn't worry about it. I use um, code 100 all over my layout and I'm perfectly happy. But dad has this pretty much everywhere. So the reason I'm talking about it is he has some copper clad um, track where he's gone to code 100 to join them up or code 75, I can't remember what he did. But I told him that I would make him some copper clad bits for him to solder on that can then screw down. I'll put some better pictures up for this as we're going. And he can basically solder these to the track and where he has his lift out section, which he hasn't lifted out for a number of years, um, he'll be able to put them in there and actually run the same track all the way through now. So it will look a bit nicer for him. He doesn't actually know that I've made these yet. So we'll find out in the videos when he watches. Um, but I've done a few of them. They're just basically copper clad PCB board and then I've got on the milling machine which you'll see as I'm talking about this and, and machine them out for him. So that means he'll have some extra work to do soon so I'll post them down to him. So yeah, hope you enjoy them dad. What else have I been up to? Been working on the W9 layout, that will be coming in a bit. Also, I'm going to show it to you now a little sneak peek. I made a workshop for the narrow gauge railway. So then obviously if they need any work doing, that will be there. That will go alongside the engine shed, which you saw on a few episodes back. Um, but that's all 3D printed. So you're going to see me doing that. I'm going to paint it. Hopefully you'll enjoy watching me paint. Take some time. So, you know, you can sit back, get a cup of tea, maybe a couple of biscuits and enjoy. One good thing that I enjoyed about doing all this is I printed out the windows separately. I glued them in afterwards and it kind of finished them off nicely. And also you would have seen before on the engine shed, I hadn't done that. And so I've put some in it now too, which is really, really good fun. I just want to say a really big thank you to all the people that have supported my channel so far. Um, my subscriber ship has gone up to, it's getting to, I think it's 2,770 odd, whilst talking about this, which is really cool. Um, as well as I have my Patreons, your names are up here. Thank you for supporting me. If you wish to support my channel, you have a little click on the link in the description if you want to. If you don't, if you just want to just subscribe and have a little watch whenever you want, then that'd be great. Anyway, on to the 
really, really fun bit. When I was at my dad's, I've done a load of footage, which I'm actually going to, I can't put it in all the episodes, like one episode. I've actually got to, as I said, I wasn't going to do before. It's actually want to put it in some following episodes because we've got some great stuff coming on uh, future episodes. But on this episode, I'm going to show you the GoPro attached to his LGB engine and we're going to do some laps and have some fun with it. So enjoy that and I'll see you back here in a minute. Oscar, should we play trains? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. can't wait to do that again that was so much fun when I did it what you're able to do is use the app on the iPhone that I've got and it's for the GoPro and you can actually watch what's going on on the camera whilst I'm using it so what we did was put the phone on the controller and you could drive the steam engine and go around but this one was electric I did talk about on my last episode that I'll be um, showing the steam engine off scene that we ran around. Um, but I would be doing something a bit better. I want to do something nice and uh, not try and cram it all into one episode like I said about. So what have I been up to next? So the next thing is I've been painting the track on the layout. I've been looking at so many videos of people painting the sleepers of the um, 009 track um, and then painting the actual um, rails I can have a slight rusty colour so let's move on to that you can enjoy that 
for me it's very relaxing to do the the painting as well as doing ballasting afterwards but if you haven't done it before or you're not confident or you're not sure how you're doing it check out how i'm doing it i'm gonna talk you through what i've been up to and hopefully you enjoy yourself and i'll see you back here very very soon so this is the um, paint that i'll be using it's the raw amber as you can see got all these bits on hobby craft as it opened then there's some uh, beige and then i've got my color that i'm going to use for the rust i'm going to mix some of these colors together to get the colors that i want to get the well the right kind of track color all i've gone for is a bit of beige and the raw amber together and uh, to give it a certain look and we give it a mix round and i'll have to do this a few times because we'll get through this and we'll just start laying it on the track really um it's not really a, a difficult thing to do and an airbrush would be much better i'm sure of it but i don't have one when well, i have an airbrush but i haven't got a compressor yet but i will get one at some stage i'm sure <laughs> so but you know arguably and i had time to do this it was sunday i already done my video for the previous episode and i just thought let's just take my time just paint through work my way through until i've covered everything and after that i'll be looking at doing the rails so i think i had some music playing um and some movies playing in the background even and uh that was just nice if i'm honest with you if I was in a rush, well, I probably wouldn't be doing this if I was in a rush. You shouldn't be doing this when you're in a rush. And I just worked my way through each little bit. When I was working on the point area, I was careful not to cover the areas that obviously contact to make each way on the point. So that's that really. Obviously, you can see I'm absolutely flying through here. This isn't real time. <laughs> um, just sped it up by about 100 from what I've been doing. But it's nice. Um, I went back over the copper clad bits a couple of times. They could have done with a, let's say, a primer. Um, but, you know, two, three coats of this kind of covered it nicely. But it takes away the shininess of the plastic. And when I come to do the ballasting later and I do the layer of PVA glue, kind of mats it all off as well, um, changes the tone slightly. So it's pretty happy with how it all looks. So pretty much done all of that now and now I'm going to do my nice rusty colour using the colours that I talked about before the burnt sienna I mix burnt sienna a little bit with the raw amber and you'll see it looks quite um, strong there but once we let that dry and we have the um, matte um, kind of effect that happens from doing the um, PVA glue on it later on which has been watered down it all kind of blends in quite nicely so that was very satisfying to do again this bit actually took a fair bit of time we got both sides of the track i can't obviously cover the sleepers so you know you've got to be careful with it it wasn't as relaxing this bit because i had to be careful whereas the sleepers i didn't have to be careful well as much and when i got to the points i had to work around the different areas just to make sure i got bits that are good to get but i didn't get areas that i shouldn't have So as you can see, I'll work my way around and have a great time <laughs> in doing it. So we'll speed it up now and I can fly through and show you all of that. Once I've done the whole lot, we'll be getting on to the fun part, which is ballasting, which should be good. I always like doing a bit of ballasting. Some people find it a bit um, repetitive or monotonous. I don't know. Um, a lot of people moan about it, but if you do bits and bobs here and there and take your time it's all right i guess if you're doing a whole layout in one go that's where it gets quite emotional but for me yeah this should be absolutely fine but i think before ballasting i'll probably uh cover the whole board in some uh, brown paint to get rid of the uh, osb look to it but as you can see i'm coming to an end with that and this is my paint i've got to use some of the poster paint that um hobbycraft do but it's quite a light brown on this one so what I decided to do was um, use a darker one that I've got which is it's not the raw umber but um, it's one of the uh, the umbers <laughs> anyway so yeah just coating the whole thing in this and just gives it a nice look I need to get some nice grey paint so I can do the edges I've decided that's the colour I'm gonna do I was watching the Hornby magazine um, 
the recent layout update and he paints everything grey and to be honest grey looks really good even it looks almost like a finished thing um, so I'm gonna yeah get some grey paint and we can make that look nice I think that's quite important you can see I'm painting around the uh, turntable area which is an area which I can't wait to do but I need to spend some time doing some designing for the uh, the turntable I like to overthink things from time to time um, only because you only get to do it once and it's a fun process but now I'm doing the ballasting um, these pots are a little bit tricky to pour out of but I got used to it in the end and got better better but just pour it down the center um, and it's as simple as that really um, you build up to a certain well um, my brother taught me how to do the ballasting um, and all we do is yep yeah, pour it down the center and then we're gonna get a I didn't use a massive brush to do this but it's a brush which has got a sturdy end and you can basically prod it all down so you kind of tap 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 and you'll see it kind of work its way into the sleepers and spill over the edges and just be patient with it it's not like a two second job keep tapping away until you get it roughly you know that you've got it in all the slots and that there's not going to be um, just kind of a cavity that you can see cork underneath so as you can see it's, it's taking shape here you've just got to neaten up all your sides make it look tidy um, and then the excess bits just brush it along over to the other areas um, the daunting bits are when you do the points because yeah you could be causing yourself some trouble but the critical bits are just make sure you don't stuff the mechanism full of um, ballast just put it in areas that you know aren't going to affect the the movement and also um, what I found was there will be little granules of the ballast um, stopping the blade actually touching its way over but we'll go over to that in a second all I've done here is I've got watered down PVA glue very very much watered down oh this isn't watered down PVA glue what am I on about this is just very liquid water um, you know with some water um, and that goes on to it first that kind of works its way in it edges its way in and breaks the surface tension and all we do now is with that soaked in we're gonna get the watered down PVA glue like massively watered down um, to then go on this afterwards and then you'll be able to just watch it soak in so I've got my dobber here a little dropper I got a load of these off uh, eBay not for well yeah for not a lot of money really and I just pour it down the center and then I'll pour it on the sides afterwards you will find that some of the ballast lifts and works its way over but I wouldn't really worry about that too much you can hook it all off afterwards even if it's stuck on there you can pick it off it'll be absolutely fine and here you just see me um, taking care not to mess up my points just take your time don't overdo it and you'll be absolutely fine I promise you Well, that's almost done. I have to do the turntable area and get that sorted. Again, that's gonna be like a 3D printed part and I wanna work it all out and get it really, really nice for when I see you all, you'll see that I've done something, hopefully, let's say slightly special. I don't know, I'm gonna have a go at doing it. I'm not gonna try and make it too complicated for myself, but I wanna have it so it stops at certain points and it picks it up through having like infrared sensors for when it gets low over the tracks. And so I can adjust it and go from there. My friend Ian's gonna give me a hand on that on working out the electronics because it is kind of tricky. Uh, well, not for him, I think it's pretty easy for him. So what I'd like to do is show you how we did this with the 3D printing. It's been really good fun. Any of you that are tempted to get a 3D printer, get one. <laughs> They're not crazy expensive. You can have a lot of fun and just make fun things from making um, drawers, pots. I've got a USB holder here, which has got a pen and everything. That's all 3D printed. That's it's great. It's great fun, honestly. Um, anyway, I've got the Ender 3. Um, it's not actually mine. I've borrowed it, but I've actually got the Ender 3. Um, V2 that will be coming in um, I think about a week and a bit and I'll be able to tell you what I find about that anyway let's go over have a watch of this going around not going around it's not going around anywhere but having some work done on that so this is the CAD drawing that I did 
I started with the engine shed and that's it's um, parametric you can start playing with um, adjustments <laughs> on there just and then adding some really cool details like the workshop on the side so it allows me to put little machines in there this is the Ender 3 doing its magic and uh, since doing this actually I've got the magnetic bed for it this is the one that came with it from a couple of years ago and um, no, it's been good to see my little windows on the side and the roof, uh, roofs <laughs> growing um, but yeah once that printed off which took some time I think it was like 13 hours or something like that I'd have to double check um, I, I peeled it off and yeah it came out very very nicely I actually redid the windows um, you'll see that they'll be in blue uh, when they actually come into frame um, because I kind of did it size and size and it was too tight to fit so I thought right let's uh, redo these and I'd got some other material in and I utilised that which was absolutely fine and uh, yeah there's always lessons to learn and I can use these windows for other things like my engine too, so that's cool so these are little windows in a nice uh, blue printed material and uh, I'm going to stick them into that engine shed at some point but we'll stick all the workshop ones in first because we're going to give it a primer after that I just use normal super glue that holds it extremely well it bonds very very well with the um, the PLA material which is the poly uh, polyactic uh, acid material which is um, corn starch if you didn't already know that it's a vegetable based um, plastic which is fantastic you've got other types that you can use for doing all this but I haven't played with any of that yet so I'm not going to pretend to know much more than that so now we we'll glue the roof on um, and then obviously we've got to glue the other one on as well but it glues so so easily um, just hold it on for a bit and then that's it really so I'm using a thin um, cyanoacrylite uh, super glue I think that's how you say it <laughs> anyway but it's all together it looks smart and I primed it up with some Halfords grey and then I used my beige paint from a hobby craft uh, to do the first bit and I do two coats of this um, and because it kind of soaks in like a sponge um, I find with this even with the primer on there so I do my two coats and that gives it a good bit of depth and it starts looking solid obviously I have to wait for it to dry um, I actually painted this on, on an evening so it wasn't warm so I had to just wait for it um, I could use the hairdryer on it I guess yeah we put that in there I try not to make too much of a lumpy mess as I do it but it is what it is and I'm the only one that's going to see it but I'll try my best as always and we're just going to get that paint on there and make it look nice um, once I've done that um, so I've stuck my little windows in there I painted them white so they look nice enough I think and once it's on the layout it will look a bit more fitting so I thought I'd uh, squeeze that in you can have a little watch of that and um, what I also did with this was I painted up the ends that you'll see on the later bit with the dark stone of the Great Western colours. So that looks nice. I think you would agree that looks better with windows instead of a big cavity. But what we need to do is get back onto this. I'm going to paint the roof. Um, it's just a iron breaker grey from Citadel Paints. And I'm just going to do one solid coat on that. And then once we've done this, I plan to do a black wash, which is just some black paint. And I mix it with loads and loads of water, and then I put it on. So, but we'll get back to that in a second. Um, so now I'm mixing up my wash for the pebble dash. Um, we add a bit of brown to it to make it dark, and add loads and loads of water. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to coat the whole lot. And then after I've coated it, I'm going to literally splotch it off with tissue. And then it will kind of leave kind of a non-uniform look to the whole thing so it looks like there's lots of different stones in there and yeah, it's been weathered a bit by um, time so I'll do this let this dry and then eventually we'll come back and we'll um, do a bit of effective like dry brushing but I do it with a sponge and give it a splodge and yeah it all uh, starts taking shape then when you see it like that so for me I'm using one of two colours. Um, I start with the dark one which is the light top I think it's called. And let's get the sponge I kind of spread it out over there not too much is on it and I just kind of you can see like instantly little bits go on and it just kind of highlights certain types of stone that will be on there that have really got 
lies in. I really like the look of the the light stone uh, bits. So I work my way around and just I don't really think about it too much. I just cover the area and if you don't like bits you can add other colours. You can come back in with dark ones if you feel you've done too much. But it just gives it a bit of depth so from a little bit of a distance away it doesn't just look like one colour because um, we could very easily just paint things one colour. Um, so that's nice. So then I go for the other colour which is it's called string like fleece, cordal, spango, henin, I don't know. But that's the colour that it has on the Hobbycraft paint. It's not clear of what colours they are half the time, but that's fine. And now here I've got the black wash that goes on, which you're probably thinking, that's really dark, Tristram. What are you doing? And at the time I thought, oh, that's a bit dark, but I had lots and lots of water. And then I can sponge some of it off anyway. And it goes in all the crevices of the corrugated steel look which is the whole point of all of it really. So yeah, that's kind of to the satisfactory look for me. Um, and just really happy with how it looks, I'm honest. The other one that I did on the engine shed was a little bit light, but to be honest, they could have been at different times um, and fine. I guess it's all galvanized steel. I then did a small wash on the, uh, the garage door so that can be lifted up and down for when they bring in parts for the engines or you need to bring a machine in or out so for me it's nice to have a workshop and I'm looking forward to buying some little machines to go inside not that anyone's ever gonna see them um, but I need to find out a place that sells these types of things but after that I give it a small dry brush it looks quite aggressive here <laughs> and I can see some whiffs of paint but just some silver paints that I've got um, just to take away that darkness and then I use the dark stone of the Great Western Railway colours that I'm going to use on the edge of the roofs or the door frames the window frames and just work my way around and as it's enamel paint I use a lot of uh, spirits with it just to thin it out so it keeps going um, but I'm starting to like enamel paints more and more because of the consistency and so like with the whites I wasn't happy with it on this so I want to get hold of some white enamel paints and yeah work my way through um, and they kind of dry really really hard whereas the acrylics I always find that you could scratch them off easier I find than if you know the enamel but I can always matte varnish things anyway so it's satisfying doing this and I think you know when you build experience you then learn what you need to do better or what you need to add to your fleet of tools so to improve what you do really um, every time I'm painting I'm always thinking I could do have a brush that's this shape and I got a few new brushes for when I was doing this um, but it makes me think about some other bits that I'd like at the same time but anyway this is just the big door frame um, I'm gonna work my way around to doing the little door frame and then once I've actually done all of the dark stone color I'll use the light stone Great Western Railway color on the main garage door and the back door and then that will be it completed really, I'll be really pleased. But yeah, i just do the ends and I'm looking forward to doing the signal box. I'll do it in the same kind of fashion, um, yeah, have it so it has a similar look to it. Um, but I need to do that with, by 3D printing, which would be fun, so I need to finish drawing it. I've got the, not coaling stage, but the area that has the coal. Um, there's the uh, water. Uh, tank which so they can fill out with water so these are all the different things that I can get done and I will be getting them done at some point I just haven't uh, had the time to do it yet work's getting busier and busier and so it just means that I can't dedicate the time to the videos as much as I can each week but some weeks I'll be able to do what I believe are a great video or, or um, if I can't do a great video I'll probably wait another week so I can make it good and just not shove you out videos just because it's another week so this video I wasn't sure if I would release it now but yeah I'm pretty happy with how it's gone so far I hope you've enjoyed watching um, me painting um, I always think people find it very boring but then I see that I still get some views so I just think oh, okay they couldn't have found it that bad but I guess we're all trying to pick up tips here and there but I'm happy with how it's turned out um, to finish it off I decided to make it rusty so I had some light rust from some forge world um, colors I need to get some different type of weathering powders and all I did was I kind of didn't do it as much as on the other one but kind of gave it some areas um, of you know it's distinctly started rusting 
Um, they've not really taken care of these roofs, have they? Um, but I felt that this was quite bright, this colour. So what I did was I came in with some water and kind of just painted that over the top. And that that just seemed to dull it down a bit. And it came out really, really nicely in the end. I was pleased with how it looked on the layout. Um, but I'll see what you think of it. But I think it looks great on the layout. I think what we do is we'll finish we, at the end of that, that will finish the video. Um, but I've had really good fun doing all this. I'm going to check my paperwork, see if I've missed anything. I don't think I have. It's been brilliant talking to you all. I hope that you're all taking care of yourself. Everything's becoming a bit more back to normal. Um, I'm, I'm enjoying the ability to now um, travel and do all the things that I did before. Um, but obviously whilst taking care of ourselves. Anyway, take care of yourselves. I'll see you soon. See you on the next episode, whenever that might be. Work's getting busy, so I don't know if it will be next week or the week after that, but I'll try my best to share with you whatever I get up to. Anyway, see you later. Bye.